All right, I'm super excited about this one. I think today is the day that I can finally say with moderate confidence that I am done distro hopping. This right here is Nobrara Linux, and at least for me, it is the perfect combination of tweaks, modifications, built-in extensions, and applications on top of a Fedora base to the point where at this point, I have absolutely no desire to really even try anything else. And I mean, if you've been watching this channel for any length of time, you know I've dabbled around here and there. I have a huge amount of long-term reviews where I've spent countless months in various ecosystems, lots of initial impression type videos, I just spent three months in Ubuntu, which was an absolute nightmare of a time. You should hit the I to watch that video if you'd like to. And just switching over to this after Ubuntu is an absolute breath of fresh air. So in this video, we are gonna be talking about that, this distribution specifically, some of the tweaks and modifications that I've personally made to it, and just why. Overall, I could almost recommend it to just about anybody. Just how I could recommend the sponsor of today's video, uh, Exter. These wallets are awesome. They feature a quick release mechanism that fans out all your cards, saving you time and effort. The wallet I have here is called the Parliament, and it's my personal favorite. Feels great, quality stitching, and there are additional pockets for extra cards, and inside there's a great place to clip your bills or place the optional Bluetooth tracker with solar charging. Don't want to use this tracker? Well, they have the same wallet and an aluminum card holder with the perfect spot to place an Apple AirTag. They have a fair bit of items with different colors and styles, so chances are they will have the perfect item for you, including additional phone cases, bags, and more. And right now, you can take advantage of their summer sale to save an additional 25% off using the code TECHHUT until September 21st. So go ahead and check them out at the link down below. Again, big thank you to these guys for sponsoring the channel. I never realized how much I'd actually appreciate something like this. Super cool wallets. Again, link down below. All right, so this right here is Nobrara Linux. If I open up our web browser, I haven't changed the homepage yet, so it's going to take us to the Nobrara project website in which it talks about all the different kernel tweaks and patches and various things that have been done to this system just to improve it overall. When it comes to the overall installation of this, it's no different than normal Fedora. It uses the Anaconda installer. After the installation and you first boot into this, that's when you notice it is incredibly different as a lot of the things that I personally recommend that you do after you install just normal Fedora are already done for you. You're not gonna need to go to the RPM Fusion website and install various media codecs and drivers through there, including those non-free repositories that you're just going to end up needing that does not ship with Fedora. Additionally, if you have a NVIDIA GPU like I do in this laptop, it's going to be your best friend. When you first boot in, it's going to immediately prompt you with a dialog to go ahead and install the proper drivers. It's going to automatically detect what you need and install said drivers, so you're not going to need to open some dialog, go into some additional application, and try to find what you need. It's just gonna throw it in your face and get it done for you. And if we go ahead and scroll down here, we can see some of the uh, bug fixes and gaming oriented updates. Now, this is geared to be a gaming distribution. And most of what you're gonna see here is going to kind of accompany that philosophy, including all these various kernel patches, various settings fixes, and some things that I even recommend you do within the DNF configuration, such as enabling fastest mirror and increasing parallel downloads. I usually go with 10, but you obviously kind of do that based on your internet speed. And the big deal is a lot of the tools and everything that is just pre-included out of the box, especially the uh, gaming oriented things. For example, if I go ahead, go over here, we have Goverlay, which is pre-installed and it just works out of the box, which is really nice. There's no weird things you have to do to get it set up. You just go ahead, configure it how you want, save it, and you're good to go. Additionally, a very important note is the actual developer who put this together. And that is this person right here, Glorious Egg Roll. Thomas here is a Red Hat developer, and he does a ton of work with Proton, Wine, and a whole bunch of other projects, including this project right here. And just kind of scrolling through these repositories, you can see a lot of what's going on. Lutris, Goverlay, contributions to the Fedora AMD GPU Pro drivers, and just really a whole lot more. It's very impressive. Looking at my desktop, you will notice that this is not what the uh, stock Nobara install looks like. That's because, like I said, I've been using it, I've customized it and modified it 
to make it my own and actually match my workflow. But where I can kind of give you an idea of what was going on, well, I'll put on screen what the actual kind of base install looks like. Personally, I'm not a fan of a lot of what's going on. This right here is the extensions. I haven't removed any system extensions. So some of the main ones that I disabled that were enabled by default was application menu, not a fan, arc menu, not a fan. Dash to panel was kind of the main one. This is what it looked like previously. I prefer good old GNOME, so this is what I'm going with here. And then, of course, there's a bunch of stuff that I would want, like sound input device chooser, which, by the way, that's going to be included in the next version of GNOME. It's going to look beautiful. It's going to be up here. It's it's going to be magnificent. Pop Shell was enabled. That's a System76 tiling, which it's a good extension, but it's not something I actually use enough to have enabled. And, of course, you just have some uh, quality of uh, life improvements like Blur My Shell, Clipboard History, and then you can see what I added here, Dash to Dock and Open Weather, basically, are the only two additions that I needed that I'm using. Which, by the way, a little pro tip, if I open up the uh, settings for Blur, Blur my shell, and then I go over to dash and I enable this. You can see we have some ugly corners around uh, the dash to dock. So if you ever get that, just jump in here, disable that, and that's usually what the problem is. In addition, you can just kind of see some of the applications I use down here on the dock is definitely the most popular and the ones I play around with the most. Discord, obviously, we have Steam, GIMP, Caden Live, Audacity, and of course our terminal emulator, OBS Studio. And right here, I think it's Remina, Remena, something. This is a remote desktop client. Yes, uh, GNOME Connections is included, but I just like the settings and a lot of stuff that you could do with this a lot better. For example, if I just go ahead and open this up real quick, you can see this is going to be a uh, full Windows install that's running over on Proxmox back there. And this has a whole dedicated GPU. I have a whole separate video on this if you're interested. This is a phenomenal setup right here. You can see, for example, right here, I got a DaVinci Resolve up and running. I usually do a little color correction in here and then throw the file out and go mess with it somewhere else. But overall, this is really nice. For example, if I go like that, I go toggle full screen mode, just like that, I am now in windows and you can see how responsive it is too it doesn't even feel like i'm in an actual uh remote client type environment but let's go ahead and close this down before we get some uh some of the neck beards riled up so being that this is a gaming centric distro that is what we're going to kind of dive into here for a minute i got steam all set up ready to go and again this is all on wayland and thanks to just things being pre-included that should be if i go to proton up QT. You can see I have a few custom versions. I have the uh, 724, which is making Fall Guys work perfectly fine. And then I have 733, which is making Elden Ring work perfectly fine. So for example, if I go ahead and uh, dive on into Elden Ring here, just a quick launch, easy anti-cheat, spinning up with ease. Ooh, hoo, hoo, there we go. All right. I just kind of want to show you the performance because, all right, turn down some of that volume and you can see over here, if I go to display, we're at 1440p high settings and I got a go overlay working it right out of the box. Let's go ahead and continue. And just for the record, this is a 3070 mobile uh, GPU. And we're rocking about 40 frames per second, about 50 frames per second at 1440p, which is phenomenal. I was getting nowhere near this good performance on uh, Pop! OS or even just stock Fedora. Return to desktop. You know what's even better than Elden Ring? Fall Guys. Now, Fall Guys is super touchy to actually get working. Uh, I have to load it up first with uh, the Proton version. I think it's like 7.15 and then 7.24 after it installs anti-cheat and all that. It, it's super picky. Turn down the volume and just for checking, you could see right here. Uh, this is set to 1080p. I'm just going to keep all that. Proton games like this don't always run as good as just like Linux native games, but I mean... Still very playable. All right, this is definitely a uh, much less intensive on our uh, GPU here, rocking like 20%. And we're off about 50 frames per second. Absolutely beautiful. And again, I just do have to note that there's a uh, OBS is running. The real question is, will I get first place? Me and this guy right now. Uh, I should have followed him. Uh, it's a race. The race for the finish. Oh, I'm gonna get it. I'm gonna get it. First, 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 first. Come on. Come on. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm gonna back out. 
I'll pretend like I'm like really good, but that's the first time I've ever gotten first place. Now jumping into a split gate, and I'll note on this one, my PC is warming up quite a bit. Um, but you can see in some intense action, it dropped down to 40 there. Damn. And average frame rates are sitting about 60 on this guy. With the note that um, it's probably 1440 resolution, and as far as the settings, everything is set to epic. And even if I go a little more reasonable, let's go far, high. My computer is cooking. I could probably uh, cook an egg on it right now, but that's not nothing to do with the operating system. That's due to the fact that it's a gaming machine. Da -da 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 -da. I can't aim. I can't aim. Wow. <laughs> let's get let's give the computer a break, shall we? You can see some of the other games I've been playing that I'm not really going to be uh, diving into at the moment. Overall, when it comes to gaming, this is a phenomenal experience. The only other like gaming centric distro I tried out was Garuda Linux, and for Arch, it's pretty good. But there's just so much crap on that. This is just basically Fedora vanilla with a couple extra things added that are, it's definitely appreciated. What I will do is just say what I've personally added thus far. And the only thing I've installed is Brave. I have a eDraw Max here. If I go over, uh, Lutris was pre-installed. I added VMware Player, which doesn't really work because you need an older kernel to get that to work. I've added this a Synology Drive client, which works good. I've added OnlyOffice. I've added Transmission. I've added Microsoft Edge. They didn't put that there. And I've added these two. Now, one thing that is worth checking out, I honestly haven't really used it. The GNOME Software Center has been perfectly fine. But this right here is the Norbrara Package Manager. As with what it actually is, which is Yum Extender for DNF, it's very similar to uh, Yast, for example, or the uh, Package Manager within OpenSUSE or Front End Package Management application. So if I go to Installed, I could get a better idea of everything that's on the system as a package-by-package uh, package basis. I could see History, so the very last thing I did was I installed HTOP today. And then under Packages, I could go to Available, and we could go ahead and grab something through here. So if we wanted the best cross-platform RTS game, we just go ahead, boop, give that a check. And down here, we'd see some more information. And I could go up here and click this guy right here to apply the pending actions, which you can see what it's going to install, 080 and various dependencies. Hit OK, type in our password, and just like that, we're rocking and rolling. One thing I don't like about it when it's doing things, you can't really like minimize it, but of course you could go and do other things if you'd like to. Now, I, I just now remembered it. I didn't notice it. I was gonna talk about the issue I was having while I was gaming, but it seems to have resolved itself. Um, I was getting a really bad like vertical tear mark when I was uh, playing various games on Steam and it was a known issue. I actually found the, uh, I believe it's on GitLab, whole list of all bunch of people having the same issue and them trying to work on it. I don't know why it's fixed for me, but it is and I'm not going to complain. So again, overall, it's it's been very nice. It's It's just Fedora and I love Fedora so much, but it's the perfect amount of tweaks and customizations to make everything work. Granted, most everything works in Fedora, but this requires almost no extra customization or really anything to get a lot of the stuff working that you would need to. Even with this, like, this Synology application right here isn't even a official Fedora supported thing, as you can see by this not properly closing out. And I have a dock here with display link drivers that are built for Fedora specifically, and just everything worked that's the main point of what i'm trying to get at this works and i love it and uh you should you should maybe try it out just like you should try out the sponsor of today's video <laughs> links below but seriously these are some phenomenal wallets i'm sending this one to my friend he's gonna he's gonna like it with all that anything i mentioned in this video will be linked down below including some of the other videos that I kind of referenced throughout this whole thing. And with this, I have, like I said in the beginning, I have no intention on actually uh, removing this off my system. So it might be a while before y'all get another long-term Linux distro review, unless if something really stands out that I really want to try out. Because at this point, with just how this system functions, I don't want to restart. And I've been playing around in Linux like, like full-time like this for two to three years, and it seems like I'm in just about the right time scale in which that decision makes sense. With all that, I do hope you all have an absolutely beautiful day.
and goodbye.